All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Alpha Obeisance channel. Uh, it's been an interesting evening, man. Um, I logged into my channel just to check how things were going, to see if anyone had chimed in, and much to my surprise, there were actually quite a few of you guys that uh, had dropped comments. I uh, had me one smart ass in here, it's pretty typical, but thankfully, uh, the good outweighs the bad in this case. So many of you guys have been super chill, super supportive, and uh, I've had a good time chatting with you guys. So I just wanted to, to first and foremost give you guys a shout out. Thank you for the follows, thank you for the likes, and thank you for the conversation because I do not socialize in real life. I am, <laughs> I am introverted as it gets. So I do appreciate it. Uh, that being said, I have been working on a new video uh, here this this evening. Uh, I guess at this point it's this morning. <laughs> um, working on getting a sort of a Nix OS gaming demo going, just to just for those that are curious if if Nix OS would make a good gaming distro. So as you can see here, I've got I don't know one two three four five six seven eight uh, eight or so uh, videos from different games. Um, I've got the Ark Survival Ascended, Baldur's Gate 3. Um, I've got uh, BeamNG here. I've got Borderlands 3. I've got uh, Cyberpunk. Um, what else we got? Days Gone in here, uh, as well as Remnant 2. And then last but not least, I've got Woken Lords of Mayhem. So that's just, you know, a handful of games to show you guys what my first initial experience gaming on Nix OS has been. Now, when I say first initial experience gaming, I'm saying that when I click the play button, it goes through the Microsoft installation of, you know, DirectX and all of those other things, meaning I have never launched the game on this system uh, at all. And so you guys get to see my first experience, how well the games run, and yada yada. That's that's running the the RTX 4090. I've got 24 gigabytes of RAM. It's the OC edition. Um, all of the RTX uh, uh, stuff that I know how to enable has been enabled. So I've got ray tracing on things like uh, Ark Survival. I believe Ark Survival Ascended's got it. Um, and there are a few more in here. Um, but I digress. I'm, I'm working on that, trying to bring it to you guys so that you gamers can see, you know, if you're interested in Nix OS, uh, that yes, uh, if you were to ask me right now if Nix OS would make a good uh, distribution to use as a daily driver if you like gaming and doing those sorts of things, I would say yes. But I would also say that about Arch Linux or Fedora or, you know, Debian or any, any offshoot, like... As long as you're willing to put forth the effort to learn what you've got to learn to configure, then that's good. Like, literally, stability is behind the configuration. If you're lacking stability, you're lacking configuration. I truly believe that because I've, I've seen it myself. I've experienced it myself. I've experienced the instability issues of, uh, of distributions. And I was the new guy that was like, oh, I don't like that distribution. It gave me nothing but problems. But then I never... I mean, I never humbled myself to admit that I was probably the one causing the problems due to the fact that I didn't know how to actually configure my system. The beauty about configuration, though, is that once you do understand it and you start doing it, uh, with an with the distribution like Nix OS, it's 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 I, I don't know if revolutionary is the right word. It, it feels like the right word. But Nix OS is revolutionary in the way that it functions because you have a master configuration file to handle all of your hardware and your uh, software installations right out the gate. So if you take the time it takes to take less time and you learn to do it and you learn to configure that master configuration file, um, you only have to do it once. Like you, you do it, you find that sweet spot where your system's super happy with the way you've got it set. It's, it, you've got all of the software that you need to use installed through the configuration. You've baked it into your, your configuration file. Then you don't have to do it again. The only time you would ever have to touch that configuration file is if you wanted to bake another software into your configuration. Because on Nix OS, you can test drive softwares without actually installing them on your system. It, it, they they do install, but it's a temporary installation, unless you add it to your software. 
uh, within your actual master configuration. And that's really cool because, you know, you may or may not know if you, you're going to like this new software, but you know that you're going to give it a try. Well, then, hell, why not just launch it through the, sh the Nix shell and give it a test drive? And then if it doesn't work, you just literally, boom, it's it's gone, like just like that. Um, so Nix OS is kind of a, a, a master tier or a god tier distro in that, if you are willing to put forth the time to really solidify that master configuration, you're never going to have to worry about stability issues again because it, it just works. That's just that's truthfully how it is. Um, I I have literally I've been using Nix OS for two days. I discovered it three days ago. I installed it yesterday. Uh, I guess by now two days ago. Uh, it's 12:30 a.m. Um, I installed it two days ago, and I, I've been using it for two days. Today was the first day, or I guess yesterday was the first day, that I had actually just used it. Uh, I, I, I had set up my configuration two days ago. I finally got RTX and all that working on my GPU. I got all my softwares that I had wanted installed, and so yesterday was the day where I just used my computer. You know, I surfed the web, I ran my Jellyfin, I, I did some, uh, you know, some recording through OBS, I did some video editing through KDE, uh, K, good lord, I need to sleep, uh, Kaden Live, and so on and so forth, and I have not had any issues, none whatsoever, the, the, uh, in terms of stability. Now there are two cases, two different software packages that I've run into issues with. The first one being Jellyfin Media Player. I'm not talking Jellyfin Server, I'm not talking Jellyfin Web, I'm talking the official Jellyfin Media Player software application. It's it's rather temperamental, I, at least in my case. Uh, I, I have yet to, do, to figure out if it's a configuration issue, um, but from what I was seeing, and what I was experiencing, you really only have to add Jellyfin Media Player to your software packages list and then rebuild, and now you've got access to Jellyfin Media Player. And it would launch about 50% of the time. Uh, there, I was able to watch a movie on one occasion, and then I closed it, went about my day doing something else, and then when I came back, I launched Jellyfin again, and it just wouldn't launch. It just wouldn't do anything. So I finally said, you know what, Jellyfin's, I mean, I can use the browser to access my Jellyfin. It's not like I need Jellyfin Media Player. So I was like, you know what, I got enough on my plate trying to figure out how to configure files. I'm going to go ahead and just uninstall it. So I did away with Jellyfin Media Player. The second application and probably the, um, if there's anything that kills me when it comes to me deciding whether I stick with NixOS as my primary distribution. Those of you that have seen my recent videos, you know that I've used Arch Linux for the past three years. Therefore, it's going to be a hard sell when it comes to deciding whether I'm going to go to NixOS. This is literally the, the first time in three years I've put any distribution aside of Arch Linux onto my hardware. So it, that tells you, that alone tells you that I am impressed by NixOS. I am absolutely impressed by NixOS. So I'm test driving it, right? But if I can't get this one program to work, it might be a deal breaker. And that is Proton VPN CLI. Uh, the software installs without a hitch. Uh, you know, I rebuild, everything goes in, I've got access to it, I can go to my terminal, I could go protonvpn-cli, log in, and my username, and it asks me for my password, but upon putting in my password, I am greeted with this error that says, unknown API error. And I can't for the life of me figure it out. Now, there were some articles on online that, um, from some OpenSUSE or OpenSUSE, uh, users that they were able to resolve the issue by rolling back Proton VPN CLI. But uh, as with every single thing on Nix OS, rolling back is not as simple as ro you know, uh, rolling back because nothing, nothing is installed where you think it would be installed. Nothing is in its default location. Nothing is in user bin. Nothing is, nothing is anywhere that you're used to having it. Absolutely everything that is installed on NixOS goes to your root partition, into the Nix directory, into the uh, store subdirectory. And that's where it goes. And it's write protected, if I remember right. By default, it's write protected, and they do not encourage you to modify it. I guess it's bad practice or what have you. So uh, I am a little bit discouraged in the fact that I can't get Proton VPN CLI to work. I do pay for Proton VPN, so it's a rather discouraging thing. 
that I don't have access to it on NixOS. Um, I even tried installing the Proton uh, GUI application and even it was yielding the same issue. It was giving me the same unknown API error and I have no idea why. Uh, on every single other distribution that I have ever installed Proton VPN, re regardless of CLI or, or GUI, they all just work. You just log in, you connect, and you're good to go. That is not the case with NixOS, and I can't figure out why. So those are my two gripes when it comes to software. Uh, secondly, configuration. Um, configuration, I'll be honest, it's a pain in the, it's a pain in the ass. Um, because, like I said, nothing is installed where you think it would be. Therefore, nothing is configured where you would think it would be. There, there is no like next to no configurations in the home uh, config directory or the local configure or excuse me, local directory. Nothing is where you would think it would be. And unfortunately, like you can modify things, but because Nix OS has its own language, essentially. Um, Everything has to be done this brand new way. And it's not that that's a bad thing, but it's incredibly uh, unintuitive for me. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm trying, you know, I'm going to give it about two weeks. I'm going to run NixOS on this. I'm going to try and do my homework, try to figure it out. And if I could figure it out, great. Um, because, you know, it's, you know, it's only hard if you don't know how to do it, right? So I'm just going to kind of stick my nose to the grindstone, try to figure out how to work with NixOS. Because I really do believe that if I can figure out how to work with it, I will have probably the most stable system I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and that, that says a lot considering my commitment to Arch Linux over the past three years. So, um, and, and to elaborate on how difficult it can be to configure Nix OS, let's take, you know, the fact that I'm running KDE Plasma right now. I, I'm using the SDDM login manager because I really like SDDM because it is aesthetically pleasing to me. In case you all haven't noticed, I like aesthetics. Okay, so it is, it's like standard operating procedure for me that as soon as I get into a fresh installation of my KDE Plasma and SDDM, the first thing I'm going to do is change my wallpaper, change, get me into dark mode, change my lock screen, and change my SDDM thing. Now, on any other distribution out there, I would just right click on my desktop, go into, you know, my KDE Plasma configuration, I would find SDDM, I would find the theme that I want, I would download it and, you know, click install, and I would apply it and everything would be fine and dandy. Or if you want to get complicated, we just go into the, the KDE Plasma configuration, or excuse me, the SDDM configuration files and modify it there. We could do it either way. The problem is, is you can't do it either way in Nix OS. You can't do it. It's not even an option on the GUI interface. And Lord knows where the configuration is at. I know where it's at because everything, everything is stored in the Nix store in the root partition, which again, I know I sound like I'm getting irritated, but it's just frustration of not knowing how. It's not that it's bad, it's just incredibly foreign. So, I, it's for that sake, you know, maybe if you're a brand new user and you've never dipped your toes into Linux at all, maybe it wouldn't be an issue for you because you're gonna be learning stuff either way. If, you're, if, you, if that were the case and you're an ambitious little beaver, Absolutely. I would encourage you to study Nix OS above anything else because I truly believe that the way Nix OS is designed, uh, it'll provide you with the most convenience, the most stability. Uh, once you get that stability uh, or stable configuration, you're done. You just keep, you make sure you keep it backed up on, you know, store, a storage device or flash drive, throw it in the cloud, GitHub, whatever. And as long as you can have access to it and you keep that config backed up and, and, and updated, then, you know, anytime you want to reinstall your system or do whatever, all you got to do is pull that config and rebuild. It's literally just a rebuild command, and it reloads the entire config, installing everything direct from that master config, and you got a fresh build just like that. So it's an, it's an incredible distribution. I have to give it that. But in terms of intuitiveness, it's, a, it's, it's weird, man. Um, it, it's weird, I'll be honest with you. So that being said, guys, um, again, again, I'm going to I'm going to leave you with this. Thank you so much for um, all of these comments. I really appreciate it. I, I, I did not anticipate running into so many comments today. 
Um, it does really make me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm doing something right. I'm going to apologize to those of you that choose to stick around. I am a bit of rough around the edges. I call it um, my bringing the blue collar to Linux because in case you haven't noticed, if you've joined any forum or Discord channel out there, things are a little soft. The, 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 the uh, company is a little soft and I come from a blue collar field. So I do not deliberately try to go out of my way to offend people. It just kind of happens. So I appreciate you guys bearing with me. I appreciate all the love and support. And I really do look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. We'll catch you later. Have a good night.